What's going on guys? Steve Pulaski here coming back with another review this time of Evil Dead. Uh, sorry guys, uh, I know last week I kind of gave you a vague explanation of what I was seeing. Uh, but I finally got it down. To today I saw Evil Dead. Tomorrow I will be seeing the host. So I like I say, sorry about that guys. Anyway, before I get anything started in this video, I just want to say a big rest in peace to Roger Ebert, the film critic. As you guys probably already know, if you're movie buffs like myself, I don't know how you can not know. It's been all over the news the last few days. Roger Ebert, dead at 70 years old. Very depressing circumstance. Very upsetting. Uh, as you guys know, I don't want to make this too much into it. If you've been following my Facebook and my Twitter, I've kind of been, you know, blowing it all up and everything, so I'm sorry. Um, as you guys got to understand, though, he's been an influence on me since I was four years old. I wanted to be a film critic ever since I was four years old. Whether that dream is going to become a reality or not, I can't say. It's looking more and more unlikely, unfortunately. I don't know, though. Um, still trying, obviously. But, yeah, big rest in peace to Roger Ebert. Huge influence on my life. Uh, in the next coming weeks, I will review uh, Citizen Kane. I think I haven't decided. I'm going to watch Citizen Kane with Roger Ebert's commentary. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a review on it yet. That I'll have to think about. Maybe I'll do a little summary of it. Uh, and then and then I want to watch Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, his film with Ross Mayer. But I don't want to get into too much of that. Anyway, big rest in peace to Roger Ebert. Uh, great, phenomenal writer, great writer is short change. You get any, any word, you know, when I was even writing my blog, I was on the way to a baseball game. Even when I was writing my blog about it, you know, I was like, it's hard to find these words. Nothing feels sufficient for him. You know what I mean? You can't sum up his legacy. It's very difficult. But, um, yeah, rest in peace, Roger Bieber. Just want to get that out of the way. Anyway, um, basically we're going to be reviewing, or I'll be reviewing Evil Dead today. Uh, and I also watched, just to be sure I was all ready for this experience, I watched Evil Dead, the original film, the original Sam Raimi picture, last night on Amazon Instant Video. It's very cheap. It's only $2 to rent. And I liked it a lot, surprisingly enough. I really did. I didn't really know how I'd respond to the, oh, you know, a lot of gore and everything. But the movie had a good cheery atmosphere to, to it. I mean, it was, it, was, it, it was frightening, but it wasn't really supposed to be taken seriously, so that's what I liked. Really had a lot of fun with it, though. Uh, this movie, Evil Dead, is directed by a guy named Fede Alvarez, and I might be mispronouncing that, but, uh, so basically this one has kind of the same premise. Five friends that go out into uh, an abandoned cabin, the one, they try and add this little deeper subtext to the story, because like in the last movie they were just going out there for the hell of it, this one, the one girl has a drug addiction, and she's going to try and go cold turkey out there in the woods. And and what they and what she winds up doing, she winds up going through this withdrawal. And then they find this book, the Book of the Dead, which is written in blood and bound together by the by by human flesh. And what the and what winds up happening though is it's like kind of they find in the cellar. It's all these human. Or it's all like these dead animal carcasses and everything. So the girl winds up becoming de uh, depressed, uh, possessed. I was gonna say, and. And that's kind of the movie. The demons start overtaking her body. The friends start becoming these demon characters and everything. It's just a whole... And then, and then it turns into a whole big gore fest, okay? That's about as sufficient as I can describe the plot. I don't want to go too much into it. The plot's not why you're coming here anyway. You know what I mean? You're coming for this. And I was shocked at the negativity on IMDb. I was looking at the, at the ratings beforehand. And it's like, you know, I, I seriously start... I'm starting to believe that when it comes to new horror movies... People will not allow themselves to enjoy them. And I, I, don't, I don't know if I should be talking because I've hated a lot of recent horror movies. I hated Texas Chainsaw 3D. Okay, I, I loathe that movie. This one I found was pretty sufficient, honestly. I thought this one was a good, not great, good horror movie, okay? Um, yeah, I was really a big fan of the atmosphere of this movie. I mean, even though it's still... You know, the Evil Dead movie, it tried to do new things with camera angles and really succeeded. There's a lot of good POV shots in that movie where they were, like, zipping by. You were, you, you, it was a POV shot, but you didn't know what it was a P, what, what it was attached to. or And you never really found out, too. That was the cool part. Um, this one has the same kind of thing. Of course, these techniques have been around for a while, and this one's not really doing anything new. But it does have variety in it when it comes to shots and filming and everything. Um... The lead girl is played by Jane Levy, the one one that is um, going through withdrawal. She was in fun. I knew she looked familiar. I kept trying to figure out who the hell I saw or where the hell I saw her from. And she was in Fun Size, the Victoria Justice movie, which is in Take It or Leave It. Anyway, and she, she's good. I like her. I really think that she could do a lot more. Um, uh, I think there's another guy in there. I think his name is Shiloh Fernandez. I might be screwing that up. But Shiloh something. But he's in that. 
And the movie was written by Fede Alvarez, the director, Sam Raimi, the original guy who was behind Evil Dead. He's got Oz the Great and Powerful, which I believe is still in theaters now. And he also made the Spider-Man trilogy. He's a great director. I like Sam Raimi. Um, he always tries to do little tricky things with shots and everything. He's really been great at it. And... Diablo Cody was another writer on it. If you don't know Di Diablo Cody, she was she wrote and directed Jennifer's Body, which is okay. It's not great. It's all right. Young Adult, which was good. I liked that. A lot of people hate that one, too, that I liked. And then she also did Juno, which is my favorite picture by her and most people's favorite pi picture by her as well. I don't know. People have given Diablo Cody a bad rep. I don't know why. I think she's a really talented writer. She's got a good little... Um, She's got a she's got a good little like like quirkiness about her, but she's also got a nice human side to her. Like I, I know they made fun of her in the movie God Bless America, but that's what I'm thinking about right now with, with um, what was it um, I can't make my mind work today. Bobcat Goldwyth, that was it. But um, no, I'm talking myself into a corner here. Evil Dead, though, honestly, it's a pretty good horror movie. Okay, there's some good surprises. And I was laughing though at the people on the on the internet that were saying like. There's no characterization. I didn't care about any of the characters. Did you care about any of them in the original Evil Dead? Like, really? I mean, there was no character. There's less characterization in that movie. There was no real, like, central thing beside the demons. It was, they were going out to this cabin for whatever. At least with this one, they try and tack on the drug addiction. And they don't really give an opinion about it. It's just, like, kind of there. But it's, like, it gives the film more of a, kind of a leverage, I guess you would say. But it's like when people say there's no characterization, there was no characterization in the original Evil Dead movie. You know what I mean? There was no... People, they were faceless. You know what I mean? And the same thing kind of goes here. But, and so in that regard, it's not that, you know, it's not that great in terms of characterization, but a few horror movies are. Um, but I really like the atmosphere of this. There's good uh, shots of, wo of woodsy scenery, and there's very, and there's very good... Um, there's good scenes of suspense. They're not prolific like they were in the original because the original had a nice raw quality to it it was like it was very indie and it was very low budget but it was also just very like natural i guess you could say would be the word whereas this one it feels more like a studio product which kind of would turn people off um but yeah i still think this is a pretty decent horror movie there's a lot of gore in it and they and they say it's like violence for and this is another complaint i see it's violence for the sake of violence so was the original the original was the same way the original you know, do you think gouging somebody's eyes out with two thumbs and having blood spew all over the place you think that was just for like you know whatever you know i mean do you think they just did, did that with a clear purpose no it was violence for the sake of violence and, and the thing about it is though to this one it's not mean spirited it's not like sadistic it doesn't seem like they're like it's trying it it, it it doesn't seem like it's trying to be this very nihilistic movie it's try it's just trying to be like it exercises its right to be campy creepy and very um i guess you would say potent you know what i mean it's a very it's a very in intriguing movie it's always alive and it always knows what it's doing and it never goes on for too long it's about 91 minutes which is perfect for this kind of a movie it doesn't need to go on any longer and, and, I don't know, it's a very well-done movie, I guess you could say. So, I mean, maybe varies a little bit extreme, because there are some things I wasn't really fond of, as I just mentioned. But, not a bad movie overall. Out of four stars, I'm giving it a three. And it is pretty insane when I read, like, reviews that say, like, it's violence for the sake of violence, and they're saying that there was no characterization. I didn't care about any of the characters. I really genuinely want to know, did you care about any of the characters in the original? I knew I know some fans since Evil Dead's a cult movie. They made two sequels and a musical. Um, I, I do do think some people are gonna get upset at the fact that Ash isn't in it. You know Bruce Campbell's character, which is a little bit of a shame. You know I like Ash. He was cool in the original. He was doing his thing. I like that. But there's also no CGI in this movie either, which is I think great. It's a great freaking th thing. There's just buckets and buckets of blood, which is a really good throwback to like 80s style slasher movies and 80s style. Uh, you know I mean th those kind of movies. Anyway though, giving it three stars. That's what I can say. Next week, or tomorrow, I'll hopefully have my review of the host up. And then next week, uh, I'm taking the ACT, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'll be taking that Saturday. So there's nothing going to be Saturday. And then I'll hopefully get out and see 42, the Jackie Robinson movie. Um, 
I was going to go see Scary Movie 5, but I got the ACT test as well. And if it does come on, this is tentative, but I've heard rumors that To the Wonder is coming on DirecTV. This is a rumor, though, but if that is true, I might produce a review of that one, too. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, though, because I haven't done reviews in the past for video on demand movies, but I might. I don't know. Yeah, Terrence Malick's To the Wonder, so up in the air on that. the drudgery of the horror genre we've experienced recently. So thank you guys for watching stuff. If you haven't, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.